state finals. North versus South conference winners. The Wagga Vipers representing the South, the Maitland Redbacks for the North. And this is the 14 boys division. James Preston and Nathan Loveday to bring you all the action here. This one should be an interesting fixture, Nathan. Yeah, looking forward to it. I'm pretty sure it was a Vipers successful in the first game of the uh, the 14s boys and uh, the Redbacks fighting back for the second game to send this into a decider. Now, a few of the divisions are done, uh, including the 16s boys. So big congrats to the Newcastle Knights who were successful in defeating the Cronulla Sharks in the 16s. We've got uh, wins to the Sharks, as Gab mentioned in the last one, in the 12 boys and girls. So, and the Hills Hornets taking out the Taylor Cup for the 14s girls as well. And Manly, way too good in the 18s girls. Uh, the Rose Cup named after Gab, of course, as well. Of course, a big victory in their last match too, 15-4. So they really put on quite a display as the Wagga Wagga Vipers are looking to do exactly that here with first use of the ball in this 14 boys division. Of course, 25-minute matches, no halftime break. The size will change ends when a try is scored. Here come the Vipers looking to do exactly that. The big dummy comes out, but it doesn't fool anyone. And, of course, that first try can be crucial, worth three points. Yeah, it's vital for either side to uh, take the lead. Obviously, the tap-off is vitally important as well. But the Vipers, they're just cruising through. It looks like young uh, Baggio, Levi Baggio, has got a bit of a little limp. Might be a bit sore that the young fella's coming off. Although, you know, Wagga have had a couple of weeks break. So here are the Maitland Redbacks now promoting the footy through Hedges. Now roll it out the back. Now Hedges back to the middle. Good hands there on display from Campton. Campton promotes the footy further, but the Vipers, they've got the answers this time around, so they have a chance now to work it away from their own end with a rucking set. And they keep marching upfield. They'll look to eventually head toward the sideline. Now they start crabbing across to get those fresh players back out there. Joining the fray with the hit-up is Caden Dowling. Good metres from him. Now pop it back towards the centre again. Good pressure from the Maitland Redbacks. Last play now from the Vipers stepping off the right foot. A couple of dummies. How about the footwork? The Vipers getting right towards the try line. But a wonderful diving, saving Jake touch Carpenter. there from Jake Carpenter. What an effort that was. Yeah, a serious dive there from young Carpenter that sent the uh, Maitland Redbacks supporters up in the grandstand into raptures and no doubt plenty tuning online. You might even say Carpenter nailed that touch there. Fully outstretched. He's at it again. Someone stop him. Someone stop him, but someone has stopped the Redbacks here. An incorrect play the ball means a change over here for the Vipers. So two minutes gone in this one. Both sides just still feeling one another out. No chinks in the armour emerging just as of yet. So they keep promoting the footy. They make the touch. Popped away here from Russell. Russell again in an acting half, finds support in the form of Reinhardt, who drops it down, and into the fray now comes Suckling. Suckling from left to right. Out there for Oddi. Now slow it down here. Last play now for the Vipers. Vipers heading towards the line. They jammed up quickly. It was Cohen Hill who made the touch. Yeah, it was a good touch and good all-round defence there from uh, Maitland, the, the Vipers here. A little bit one-dimensional early, but once again, it's a decider. These are the big games, James, and you know, a little bit of nerves. The Jews definitely gone. It's got a warm day here at Tempe, uh, but definitely still some nerves on show. No, it is very tasty indeed. And just taking a quick little look as well at the weather at the moment. It's quite warm indeed in Sydney. 31 degrees pass. as the Redbacks are off here. They won't stop them now. He put the foot down. Riley Rostron. Goes all the way to the try line and first points for the Maitland Redbacks. Oh, that ball back on the inside was absolutely magnificent. That'll get the, that gets the crowd on the, their feet and don't worry about that. The Maitland, Maitland crew have gone absolutely bananas in the grandstand. Rostron showed a clean pair of heels as well. Once he got that ball, there was no stopping him. Bit of a goose step in there as well to make sure he got away from the cover defence. And they are looking pretty good here to start this one, the Maitland Redbacks. But here come the Vipers now, trying to hit back themselves. Gatoski. Quick hands here. Gatoski gets there. It's a good effort indeed. He drew and passed. They're just going to confirm here that there wasn't a touch made. Now, the Redbacks are adamant there was. 
But they're going to be overruled here. They strike back pretty quickly. Try time for the Vipers. One try apiece. 3-2. Redbacks lead. And the Vipers uh, outstandingly called there, James. Striking back. There to uh, level us up at one all. But the 3-2 scoring system is that first try. But I want to point out Rico Elas with the, uh, the flick pass. That was Benji Marshall circa 2005. James, you would have been in your prime back then. Mate, I can tell you now, as a raging Tigers diehard, I will be off to Leichhardt Oval later this afternoon as well. But, oh, here comes Ellers, though. Ellers off the left foot. Now, did he get under the touch? Now, they just made it in time. It was an important one from Jack Lawrence. I think he's suffered an injury here in the process as well, Ellers. But, yeah, I was in fine form. I actually lost a tooth in that particular grand final. I was biting my teeth that much. I should have said biting my fingernails. Had a bit of a loose tooth and it popped out mid-game. Well, there you go. That would have... It's a nervous oh, boy, but space. the Redbacks what aren't nervous at all. Now they're going to overrule it here. It's try time, I think. They're coming in. Cooper Connolly with right. the touch. Nathan Loveday. So the sideline officials come in late and ruled the touch. So 3-2 it remains. Redbacks thought they had it. And in fact, he's going to be marched for a bit of back chat here. So a forced substitution. Yeah, it was referee John Salisbury. Didn't want to borrow that, I think. A little bit. Oh, oh how about the footwork? Away they go here, the Vipers through Dowling. It's all happening here. Forget the 14 boys. These are my, like the 14 men's at the moment. They are playing well above their years. Back toward the middle they come. Here they go now through Suckling, and they'll straighten things again. Now they opt for the quick roll ball. That could have gone either way, so the referee says play on as the call. Last touch now, and they won't have the strike dump to work with. Six minutes gone. They come to the shorthand side of the field, but they mark up well this time, the Redbacks. There's a lot happening out here at the Canterbury Velodrome. It's absolutely all happening. This is a place to be here on this Sunday afternoon. Don't worry about Leichhardt over the, the uh, Canterbury Velodrome. Absolutely the place to be here, the Redbacks and the Vipers, the 14s boys. So up to halfway. That one this time is far too sloppy, though. They won't say both teams at fault. That was definitely the doing of the Maitland Redbacks. So good field position to start this set here. For the Wagga Wagga Vipers, they trail by one. Both sides have collected a try so far, but that early try does secure an extra point. As they head back to the middle now through Reuben Evans. Evans creeping further upfield now. The Vipers once more on the charge. And they won't be able to get a try there, and the pass is also, or should I say the ball is knocked well away, so they will get a penalty for that. Been a good start from both sides here. The Redbacks will restart things from the seven metre mark. 18 to play, seven gone. Nice cutout pass here, opening up the play a little bit. So they continue marching upfield toward that halfway line. Good roll ball as well. The Vipers step up very quickly, but quick hands allows the play to continue. They get the touch and a nice roll ball once again. Here comes Cohen Hill. Hill drops it down. Now they come again. The Redbacks off the right foot. It's on here for them all. Just put up on the run. And that was because of a very hard-working middle there for the Vipers. And they'll get the result they were after. Yeah, some good defence there from uh, the Wagga Wagga side. And 3-2 this game. Plenty of time left. 17 minutes. And... Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next 17 minutes. It's been uh, good so far. Well, here the they go eight. now, the Vipers, as they hop down the short side. Really flirting with the touchline as well. So they pop it back to the middle. Dowling is there. Supply from Russell. The wraparound comes. Connolly in at acting half. They hit it at pace. Ball back toward the middle. All good pressure, though. They read it in defence. And Connolly had nowhere to go. Yeah, I thought uh, Walker probably just overplayed their hand there. Uh, I'm not sure of the player that threw the pass, but... They, they had a, a player in the middle, I think it was the number eight, who was chopping the hole, uh, Fitzgibbon, that was probably the option instead. They've gone over the top for the long pass and then caught it uh, at link with the defender being slightly out of position. So they might want to replay that again, run the exact same play, and then just hit the short ball. Here's Ellers on the last now, picks it up. He's got Allen in support, runs directly at an offside play. The big dummy comes in. Oh, Ellers, this is magical play. Can he link up? He does exactly that. Try time for Finn Carlson. Ellers is electric. Yeah, he's uh, got a flick pass. He's got some speed, and there he is again, extending the lead for the Redbacks. But 
Probably a little bit questionable whether the player, whether Eli's actually uh, touched the opposition player there. It'd be one to probably look over again. We're a long way away. Referee Salisbury was uh, in the action, but uh, nevertheless, it's all fish and chip paper now, isn't it, James? You're going to make me very hungry, Nathan Loveday. I've only had the bacon and egg roll a few hours ago, but certainly hungry for points of the Maitland Redbacks to start with. They've collected two tries, 5-2 on the scoreboard, but here come the Vipers. What a ball that is. They strike right back, although they've called it back here. So what have they said here? Is it a forward pass, it looks like, potentially? Yeah, I think yeah, it's Yeah, it is forward. indeed. Once again, to... And like a forced substitution as well. There's been a couple so far in this match. Yeah, Baggio might have let him know that he didn't believe it was forward and he's paid the price with the substitution there. But oh, it looked... It looked Ooh, all right from over geez. here. And there we go, referee John Salisbury with a high tackle signal there. Yeah, against the man with the ball, he came charging into the defensive line and, interestingly enough, had an arm raised in the process. So now the Vipers again with good field position here. Denied on that previous raid on the line, but can the Redbacks withhold this time? They go for a scoop, plenty of pace there on display from Reuben Evans. I think he might have done enough. They're claiming the touch, the Maitland Redbacks, and yes, they have done enough this time around. It's Riley Barnes who denies him. A play it here. One more to go. Smith, cut out pass. The flak, should I say the bat on it is. And that won't produce a result. So the Redbacks maintaining a firm defensive line. Yeah, you're not wrong there, James. Some good patience uh, from Maitland there on the defensive line. They're just holding on and doing what they need to do. Still plenty of time left on the clock, but some outstanding defence from the Redbacks. Here they come again with the ball into enemy territory. Very flat, if not forward. It's dropped anyway. So the Vipers let off the hook there for that defensive set. Now Gustofsky comes away with it up to halfway as Gustowski again drives forward. They pop the ball here to Reinhardt. Reinhardt now to Suckling. Suckling promotes it further still. Played here from Evans. At pace they go. The long dive from distance. This there. time They've they didn't there. get him. They've got underneath them. Try time here for the Vipers. They collect their second. It's 5-4. No relation to Gina, I don't think, but there's a try there, Ryan. From, uh, sorry, from Harry Reinhardt there. Sliding under the defence, and, yeah, the, the Vipers, they uh, hit back. Well, the only relation there could possibly be, I think, there is just how rich that play was. It was beautiful. Forget the coal. That was all gold, baby. Try time there for the Vipers. But the Maitland Redbacks with good field position here. Referees once again just laying down the law a little bit. So here comes Ellers. Up through the middle. And once more they've got those two big guns on deck here. So Jack Allen is also out there. Ellers. Ellers threatening again. Oh, they had to come across very quickly. Back to the seven they go. Allen waits at acting half. Allen now scooting across the field. Drops it down on the seven. They open up the play again here with Ellis. Ellis, the big dummy. He sold an ice to an Eskimo and he goes in for a try. Oh, Ellis, stop it, son. Yeah, there's some serious class in this Maitland side. And as you said, the ball there, they held it up well and the line and that's champagne footy. I think if you're watching at home, just so everyone is aware, this is the 14s, boys. This is not 18s. This is not the 16s. This is not men's opens. These are 14-year-old boys, and they're providing an absolute show and a treat for one and all here. Well, it doesn't take much of a betting man to figure out that this one has a lot riding on it. It is the decider of a three-game series here today. Both sides have claimed a victory so far, and they might be looking at getting another try here. The Vipers dumbing left, right, and centre. Reuben Evans cut them up like a hot knife through butter, passes a long ball, and they are not going to award it here, though. So they'd set it up. In fact, what have they called it? I think it will be confirmed now. Yes, yeah, so a bit of confirmation needed. But there is the try at last. Yeah, they've had to have a committee meeting, pull out the minutes, uh, declare the meeting open, and they've just closed it with the try in the end. So good hit back from the Vipers. And Maitland, they've been good at returning serve following a try. So we'll wait and see what happens here. So just 11 minutes remaining. The Redbacks, who scored first, had that slender lead as a result. Three tries apiece, 7-6 on the budgie smuggler scoreboard. 
as they are touched seven metres away from the try line and turned back on this occasion now. Hedges trying to hedge his bets, have a crack at the line himself. Hedges again, they promote the footy further still. Bury, they keep it alive here. The Red Backs nowhere to go, turned away, and they kept turning up in defence throughout that set. Yeah, they've been good. Around their goal line, the Vipers, I think both teams here putting on, as I said, an absolute clinic for, you know, 14 boys. This is a high-quality game, and that's in the ruck, but they'll play on referee Salisbury. Of course, there are plenty of higher-up accolades on offer for some of these players, looking to make those representative sides. And that one is a bit of a coach killer, though. They're not too happy about that one. So turnover there against the Vipers, but they won't have to do much defending because the very next play... The Redbacks, who headed towards the sideline, have given it away, but they'll get away with one themselves. They were offside, the Vipers, so no advantage there, Nathan Loveday. Yeah, referee Salisbury on his way off, and the referee from the sideline going with not square, and tell you what, this game's had more turns than a, an apple turnover. <laughs> so the Vipers... On the attack now themselves up towards halfway. Flat pass provided. Lachlan Oddie. Once more operating down this short side. It's a very narrow channel, but they found a bit of luck there as they then put the foot down and head towards the middle. Howard plays the ball now. They'll turn it back on the inside. And once more it comes here to Russell. Russell drops it right on that seven-meter mark. They attack at pace. How about the dummy in the step? But he was good enough to pick it all up there, Cohen Hill. That's the second time he's made a very important touch. Yeah, he gets in nice and tight there, Hill, and makes a big diving touch. And the, the Vipers, this is end-to-end -end stuff, and nine minutes to go on the clock. This is well and truly anyone's ball game. And plenty of supporters watching as well. And I must say, probably the most we've seen on the sunny side of the ground too. It's been very hot out here, 31 degrees at Tempe. Still plenty here in the shade, but... They're even bringing them out into the sunburn sections as the Maitland Redbacks continue to go on the attack here. Ella's threatening. Turned away at last. But he's back here again at first receiver. Allen in support, who now hops in at acting half. Supplies to Ellers, who slows it down. Patient in the approach. Allen, Ellers, picks it up. Goes at them. Ellers through the line, looking for support. He is caught in the in goal. That will be enough for the change over there. The Vipers again. Too hard to break down. Yeah, holding on, and the Renegades in the under under 10s. The Renegades are leading the uh, the Devils, Wollongong Devils, 7-0. Uh, so three tries. So just an up, update from the great Tim Robinson, who's uh, providing us with around the ground, uh, thanks to Guzmani Gomez. Absolutely. Tim does a terrific job for us, as does Guzman and Gomez in filling those empty stomachs. What is your uh, flavour of choice, Nathan Loveday? Is it the burrito? Is it the chips? Yeah, the burrito, the, the just the chicken, just standard. I don't go for anything too over the top, mate. Just the, the mild spice, the, the chicken burrito. Uh, enjoyed uh, some lunch yesterday, actually, from Guzman and Gomez. Paid, paid lunch. Uh, I paid for it. So just to clarify that with the look you gave me. So, but no, outstanding. <laughs> I was thinking Guzman I've been Gomez. absolutely stitched up. I haven't gotten any paid lunch from Andrew, Guzman and Gomez. Andrew and Ned uh, do a fantastic job. The lads from GYG, so a big thank you for their support over the last couple of weeks. Been terrific throughout this tournament, of course, both the conferences as well. It's certainly been heavily involved, and we do appreciate the support of all of our sponsors, sponsors including Budgie Smuggler. You've got to make sure you don't have too much Guzman Gomez, otherwise you won't fit into your Budgie Smuggler anymore. Here come the Vipers now up towards halfway, providing the pass pretty close to their sideline area. Allows for a nice little transition here, getting those fresh players back on as Dowling plays it. Now they work it away a bit more. Quick recycling of the footy too. They pick it up and here comes Oddy charging at them. They've marked up well again here. The Redbacks, they're popping it all over the place. Eventually they get to play the ball. Quick hands from Oddy back towards the middle. They're still alive here, but the touch is made just in time. Yeah, plenty of animation here from the Vipers crew. I just want to take this opportunity to, to thank all those that have jumped in commentary. I don't know if we'll get another opportunity. So James has been with us last weekend in Dubbo and the week before. Um, to all the crew, Gab and, and Jason, who will be here uh, for the next game, the 18s boys, and all the staff and everyone else that volunteered, Ricky Hetherington. A uh, big thank you to all those guys that have volunteered to, to commentate and help with the, you know, producing this product that you've had, and we hope you've enjoyed over the last two to three weeks. 
Here it's come the Redbacks, and it is play on. Beautiful stuff there from the Maitland Redbacks. That could be crucial. They've got the extra one-point lead. Now you can make it three, and that, of course, means the equation is pretty simple now for the Vipers. They've got to score twice to jump in front. The time is quickly running out here, Nathan Loveday. Yeah, not only is the opposition standing in front of them, that clock and every second that it winds down is becomes a... You know, a bit of head noise for them. And also I want to take the opportunity to thank Mark Ralston from the Canterbury Council. You'll see that the field is in absolutely outstanding nick from you know, a few weeks ago, or a few months ago from Borden Cup, where we had obviously not the best weather for it, Mark. And the team have put on, you know, fantastic job. Well, here we go, they're though, Nathan. Score. They're going to keep promoting the footy here. The Vipers, beautiful creativity in the approach. It was a bit stop-starty, but they made it work. They twisted the body, promoted the footy, and now, once more, we have a ball game, 9-8, and there is plenty of time on the clock now. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, that head noise uh, is is well and truly gone here at 9-8. It's well well and truly anyone's ball game once again. And this uh, final five minutes, and this is, once again, this is 14-year-old boys, and they're putting on an absolute clinic for us. Well, nearly put on a clinic about how not to work from acting half, though. They left it there for an eternity, and the Vipers nearly came to claim the footy. But Ellis is out there, so too is Allen. Those two link up now. Allen goes for a bit of a scoot himself. They'll pick it up and attack once again here. Barnes, Ellis, quick hands. They've opened them up again. The Vipers left at sixes and sevens. A beautiful ball from Ellis. And the link found a nice passage. Try time for the Redbacks, 11-8. Yeah, with four, just under four and a half on the clock, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind for the Guzmani Gomez uh, player of this match is no doubt going to be Ellis, regardless of the uh, outcome. He's been in everything. He has had a hand in everything, James, and you've called it superbly. Well, he's about to have a hand in a burrito as well, based on that. It's going to be very tasty for him, unless the Vipers can have a little late say here and put on a few miracle plays themselves. They come straight at the line, turning it back to the open side, but a good touch made right at the death there from Finn Carlson, who's already got to try himself. They stop one there. They'll pop it back to William Smith who now hops in at acting half himself. Smith again, an option. Were they back on side? That's the question. Referee says yes. So they'll head back to the seven-metre mark here. A little bit frustrated after that play there was Levi Baggio. Now pop it over the top. Oh, play that's on smart. is the call. Oh, the Vipers. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, goodness me. It was there on a silver platter. But the French waiter says, I am not the clumsy buffoon. And down it goes. Oh, I wouldn't even say it was silver. It was absolute gold. That The bat on there from, I think it was Baggio uh, originally, and then I think it was uh, Evans after that, was so sharp, and unfortunately, they just couldn't hold on to it. But here they are, a penalty, and they're back on the attack. Baggio now again at them with a the big dummy, and then he has a little slice through himself, but the touch is made there from Cohen Hill. In fact, no, he didn't get the feet back behind the line. I thought that was going to be the third time he stopped the try, but not the case. Once more, game on. Yeah, Baggio comes in nice and narrow with that play, and it allows him to actually manipulate the defence. And then with his dive, he's quite tall for a young man, and he, he's able to dive and get right at those feet, and that's exactly what he does. Oh, they've turned it over, the Redbacks. Two and a half to go. Well, this could be it here for the Vipers. Good field position, having just scored. The momentum is with them. They just need that one try to poke their noses in front. They haven't led at any stage in this game so far. The Maitland Redbacks, it could get stolen from them at the death. Just over two minutes remaining. They'll get the full use of the set here, and they'll probably also get another half set thereafter. Unless we see a penalty here. They pop it back on the inside. Connolly was looming. Great defence. Last play now for the Vipers. Connolly. He's got nowhere to go. It's not quite done with yet, though. The Redbacks need to march upfield and turn this ball over well away from their line. Yeah, they'll get another set here, the Vipers. They've just got to try and push up. But as we see, this roll from Maitland, outstanding driving set so far, which is exactly what the coaching staff of Carpenter and French will be ordering. Just get it down there, fellas. And as I said, they'll get another chance here, but a chance to put the nail in the coffin for the boys from Maitland. Allen. Drops it down now. Last play for the Redbacks. Can they close it here? Oh, Ellis went for the, the flick pass. It was audacious, but it was probably unnecessary. A simple pop ball back on the middle would have sufficed. Yeah, he's been good. Elaz, as I said, gave him the wrap before. And it's a matter of literally just being a little bit simple there. And I think he'll look back at that and know, you know, it wasn't the way to go. But 
Here we are with the Vipers. Still a chance. Well, they're doing a great job here, though, the Maitland Redbacks of jamming them in up against the sideline. They've burnt plenty of plays. And, in fact, they're only going to get another one after this one here. So they come through the middle. Oh, that could be crucial, though. They get the penalty. They'll have a full set to work with with 45 seconds on the clock. The last chance comes for the Vipers. Here they go now. Baggio plays it. Just around about that seven metre mark. They don't need to panic. They've got as many plays as they want to take. Baggio has a crack himself. Did they get back in time? I'm not sure they did. They're claiming it here, the Vipers. Two referees having a big discussion here. I think they might award this, Nathan Lovedate. No, they'll give another penalty, so it's not done with yet. 15 on the clock. 11-10. The Vipers running out of time. Not the plays. Oh, geez, they just came across in time. Rostron made the touch. Last play now, surely for them. Four seconds. They've got to keep the ball alive. They can't rest on their laurels. Connolly pops it. I think it was Ford anyway. The dummy comes in. They hit the ground. The Redbacks make oh, the touch. All over. And the, the Redbacks, Redbacks have done it. Have won it. That's it. They celebrate at the death. What a game. 11-10. And that'll do it for the Maitland Redbacks. What a classic finish that was there. The Vipers were gallant in defeat, but they just couldn't come up with the crushing blow right at the death. And in terms of the Guzman and Gomez man of the match, that does indeed go to Rico Ellers in the two, who was superb in that game. And the Redbacks are victorious. The North defeating the South 11-10. And up for your next... We move to an absolute cracking fixture. The 18 boys division, Parramatta take on the Northern Beaches Renegades. Don't go too far, all the action in five minutes time.